Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and it's time for Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 309. And this is my next release of Simply Defined dies, stamps, and one cut in foil plate. <laughs> Now, today is Thursday. I'm taping this YouTube a day early because Mr. SMS and I have an appointment tomorrow with his surgeon and I'm hoping that tomorrow by the end of the day we will have our game plan in order. We will know exactly what's going to happen and I'm no matter what happens, no matter what, whatever the news is. Okay, let's take it on. That's the way we've been our whole life, Mr. SMS and I. We have been we have been as poor as poor can be. I mean, let me tell you. <laughs> truly, we have been we have been so broke that we we didn't even have two two cents to rub together. And then when I was in the corporate world, we had more than we probably deserved or needed. So you know, life life takes you up and down and up and down and, and you take the good with the bad and when you're having trouble, you square off your shoulders and you hold your chin up high and you face it head on and that's what tomorrow's going to bring no matter what tomorrow brings. So I just have to believe that as long as I've got him and he's got me and we've got you, no matter what happens, we're going to persevere and get through it. And the result is going to be what the result is going to be. And we're going to live with those results and make the darn best of it. Because honestly, life's okay right now. Life is pretty good. We're not back in our home yet. And I mean, there's, but all in all, you know what? I'm breathing. So <laughs> I'm doing good. You can't complain. Now, today is all about Simply Defined, and Simply Defined is my brand, and it's a very confined brand, meaning I don't have a lot of products for Simply Defined. I do a release every month of dies and stamps, and sometimes embossing folders, sometimes a, a tool. You never know what's going to come with Simply Defined, but it is a very confined brand, contained brand, and you're only going to find it here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Now, the reason behind Simply Defined was super simple. There were things that I wanted that I couldn't find a manufacturer currently making. And so, or there was designs for dyes that I wanted that I couldn't find anybody else making. So we, we did our own brand. And again, you're only going to find it here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. But by gosh, I get emails all the time. God, could you do some inks or would you be, you know, interested, not even from customers, just from like, like manufacturers, hey, we can manufacture an ink just like blank, another competitor, for you. And and I'm like, you know, no. Just because you can doesn't mean that you should. And I'm hoping that I take that that thought process with me tomorrow when I go into my or into our meeting with the surgeon. We're gonna see just just because we can do things. Is it really in his best interest? Just because I can't have a huge array of product for Simply Defined, should I? Probably not. I want to support the manufacturers who do make all of those wonderful products, inks and sequins and glitters and, and papers. And gosh, if we don't support our manufacturers who support me, well, then I have no choice. They'll go out of business and then I will have to manufacture. And who wants to do that? I just want things that are pretty. And so, or things that I can't find. So when you look at Simply Defined or Simply Refined, our other brand, you'll see that it's very contained and that our dies and stamps and folder, embossing folders and hot foil plates are considered a one and done. So I bring them in once, that's all I can afford to do. And when they're gone, they're gone. Now sometimes, sometimes they sell out like that. I mean, literally like that. And other times, well, turns out I liked him more than you did. That's okay. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Just know that if there's something that you see that you like, I can't promise that it's going to be there for any extended length of time. Just so you know. Now today, today I have got in front of me great manufacturers. I have got 
um, Memento inks in front of me. I've got Versamark in front of me. I have got Yasutomo paints in front of me. I've got graphics paper in front of me. And these are wonderful manufacturers that we are proud, proud, proud to support. So today we're going to be cutting, die cutting, and stamping, but we're also going to be playing with that graphics white plastic, that, that craft plastic that I used with the alcohol inks and the special sauce and marabou. And the reason why I'm bringing it back is because many of you had questions. Holy smokes artichokes. So I brought it back in hopes of answering some of your questions because it is comparable to a Yupo. Yes, but it isn't, but it is, but not really. <laughs> so I've got Yupo here in front of me and I've got the craft plastic and I today we're going to be showing you a technique that you can do with the craft plastic but you cannot do with the Yupo so that maybe you understand the difference and there is no alcohol inks today. Today we're going to start off super easy with product that you probably already have like Memento ink and we're going to work with that and then we're going to get a little progressively more technique-y. So you may want to get a piece of paper and pencil to take notes and if you do, here's my pause face. See, I'm not blinking because no matter when I blink, it's going to look like I'm like this in the picture. <laughs> okay, I'm back. Are you back? Woohoo! Now, I think, oh, I've got winner, winner, chicken dinner before I get going. I've got two winner, winner, chicken dinners from last week, and that was 308, which was the studio light. Oh my gosh, it was so pretty. That's also like a one and done. So we still have some of the studio light pads left, and at even at full price at $5.50, what a phenomenal price. So I've got winner, winner, chicken dinner, two of them. Uh, <laughs> I'm never going to get these names. God bless all of you for staying with me while I, while I look down at them and go, uh, <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. So Studio Light was YouTube number 308. Um, we imported it from the Netherlands. Beautiful product and so affordable, amazingly affordable. Okay, our first winner winner is, you know what? Maybe I'll start with this one. Nope. <laughs> okay, I can do the first name. Sabrina. Sabrina Terranova? Sabrina, is that you? Hello, Sabrina Terranova, is that you? Because if it is, you're a winner winner chicken dinner. Wahoo, kachoo. <laughs> All right, now we're going to try for our second one. <laughs> hmm. uh, Tiziana? Tiziana? Tiz, 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 Tiziana Lopez? Is that it? Is it Tiziana? I don't know. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. I try. I do. But does it really matter? No, because you, you are a winner winner chicken dinner all right so what do we have to do you're a winner chicken dinner you're a winner chicken dinner wahoo got you for both of you that's our winner winner dance and i have to tell you we got an email we got an email of the most darling little girl sitting in front of the computer watching me and she sings the winner winner dance so i want to say hello how are you i hope you're watching today and did you you're a winner chicken dinner you're a winner chicken dinner wahoo cut you for you we got pictures of her actually sitting in front of the screen that she was watching it on oh my heart was just over over the moon we have we have some of the smallest little fans three years old four years old five years old but that's the next level that's the next generation of crafters we gotta instill in them how wonderful crafting is okay so how are you two gonna claim your prize go to scrapbookingmadesimple.com look for the link that says winner winner chicken dinner follow the directions we'll confirm you are indeed our prize winner and get our get them out to you <laughs> just as quick as possible oh my goodness gracious okay i'm gonna put those aside you know i was just thinking to myself i posted on facebook today and i forgot and i said i was going to announce the winners and i forgot to do that <laughs> that just came to me right now oh my i'll go as soon as this is done i'll run down and fix it <laughs> oops <laughs> all right now what am i gonna do today i think i'm gonna tilt down i'm gonna show you 
what could be the in-store make and take. I don't know yet because they're still working on it because I'm a day ahead of time. But let's tilt on down and we'll get started for today. And it was good to see all of you. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in and we're trying to zoom in tighter. And let's see. See, so what happens is my playing field is smaller. <laughs> when you, I was zoomed out, I had all of the space, but now if I do that, it's off camera. So I think I might even like mark my craft map where my boundaries are. Okay, don't go outside of that area, otherwise you're not gonna see anything. Okay, what do you think? This is a new die and stamp set by Simply Defined. And I'm thinking something similar to this will be our make and take but like i said they're still designing it so i'm not a hundred percent sure yet but the angel is a stamp and then there's a die to go with it so i'm going to put her down and i'm going to pull over one of the sets so i can kind of explain to you what was in my head when i was doing it it's very crowded up there <laughs> okay first off these are big sets, okay? The stamp is meant to cover or take up a good portion of an A2 size card. You can do it on a bigger card, but A2 size card. So here, here's my cute little Santa. There's my Santa. And again, A2 size. He's big, he's not little. He's meant to, to really fill a card so that your card making for the holidays is simple and easy and fast. But then I have these dies here, these two dies. And these are the only dies that come with him. They're also A2 sized, again, for your card making, or your mats. Now, what do these dies do? Well, I like doing my edges. And I thought to myself, Stacy, what if you wanted Santa to be on the edge of a card? What if you took your card base? I wonder if I can fold this. What if you took your card base and you stamped your Santa on him? And then you wanted to cut part of it out so that you had an edge. So that you had an edge. So if I cut this, all this would come out and he'd become, the front of the card would become the edge. And I thought, well, that's very, very cool. Right, cool. But what, what if you wanted to do something with him where you wanted to cut? this edge. So we gave you the die to do that as well. But what if you wanted to cut him entirely out? Well, there you go, because I didn't want you to not be able to cut your entire stamped image out, but I wanted you to be able to do an edge, or I wanted you to be able to do this edge, or I, or I just wanted you to stamp with him. So so each set, each die, or each die and stamp set comes with two dies that lets you decide if you want to cut an edge, which side, the left side, the right side, or if you want to cut the entire image out. Now some of them will need just a little bit of fussy cutting at the top and at the bottom. The next set I think I did better. This was my first time trying this. The next, uh, the next set of Simply Defined is the same concept, only I think I did better the second time around with the dies. But I really like the idea of being able to add him as an edge or add him as an edge or use the whole thing or use nothing. Completely up to you. Totally up to you. So that's what we're going to play with today. And we're going to be using embossing powders for some of today. Now, I think first things first, I'm going to start with my angel. And let's see, is she over here? There 
love Santa. Here she is. So, my angel. And you can see that she's a stamp, but then she's got a cutting edge right here. She's got a cutting edge right here. And remember where I said you might need to do a little fussy cutting, so you might have to cut just at the top and a little bit at the bottom. But here you can see how she is on one edge, how she is on the other. And I can turn Santa over as well to give you an idea. Here's Santa. So Santa on one edge of a card, Santa on the other edge of a card. And Santa cuts all the way out. So I think we're gonna start with my angel and I said we're gonna keep it pretty simple pretty easy peasy and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to that I'm gonna put these put that back put that back so I don't lose them and put him in there and I think I'm good to go there better now I've got my stamp, and again, it is a large stamp. So this block is a four by six. That's the size of my, my block, and you can see that my image takes up almost my entire block. This is meant for an A2 size card or larger. You can absolutely do larger, but definitely for an A2 size card. Now stamping is super easy. This is an acrylic block. You can certainly use um, something else if you've got it. Once you own a set of blocks, you don't ever have to buy them again. They last forever. Both clear stamps and cling stamps stick to them. But like I said, if you didn't happen to have a block, but you had a cutting machine, you could use, if you needed to, your um, cutting plates from your die cutting machine. It's whatever it's going to cling to. And if for some reason it stops clinging, because you should be able to take it on and off and on and off because they're reusable, then what you might have is your fingerprints, too much oil from your hands on the stamp or something on the block. And then you just want to wash them with a Dawn dishwashing detergent or palm olive or a baby wipe. Okay, so we're gonna start with this. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna heat emboss today. So I am going to bring, oh, actually I'm not gonna bring over my gush. I'm gonna go ahead and put her right on top because she's kind of a big stamp. But I am gonna start with my Versamark. This is an embossing medium, which means that the clear, clear liquid on here, it's clear, clear. I don't know if you can see that. See, now I can't. It's gonna take me a little while to get used to being close up. <laughs> so embossing medium, this clear liquid that's on here stays wet long enough for embossing powder to go over the top of our image. And it's pretty magic when people see embossing for the first time. Do you have to replace this pad? No, absolutely not. When your, when your Versamark starts to dry up, and I'm gonna tell you that's gonna be a long time from now, you can absolutely buy a reinker and go in and add some more over the top and add it in. But Versamark is a Sukuniko product and it really is some of the, it's just the best on the market. It's been around for ages. It's tried, it's true, it's trusted. And if you're doing heat embossing, this is an awesome way to go. No matter what your pad looks like, even if it gets all glittery and embossing powder over it, don't worry about it, it's going to be fine. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna ink up my stamp. And because it's clear, you're not going to see any ink on it. It's clear, if it was black, you'd be able to see the black ink on it. But being that it's clear, so you wanna make sure you do a good job. You're not gonna stand there for 20 minutes. We're not gonna sing the ABC song and then you're done. You just need to make sure that you're covered all over. And then because it's a large stamp, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp right on top, which means instead of going this way and stamping down. I'm gonna turn my stamp over, lay it down flat, and put my piece of paper on top of my stamped image. This is really helpful for anybody who struggles with their hands. 
or has small hands or maybe has arthritis, this is a big help and an easy way to do your stamping on large images so you don't get what they call holes little empty spaces where you didn't press hard enough. And you can see I'm just giving a nice back massage. And can you see my hand is flat? I'm not doing this. My hand is flat, giving a nice back massage. And once I think I've done a nice job in the back massage, I'm gonna pull it up and then I can kind of see my image. Can you kind of see it in there? Now we've had people put um, put ink down. Let's say you took a, a pigment-based ink or a memento ink and put it down first and then put your Versamark over the top of it so you could see it. Let's see what happens if we do that. So I'm going to take a little bit of, I don't know, let's take the, nope, that's still too light for me to see. Let's see if we take the red. Oh, I can see the red. So I've inked it red with dye-based ink. Let's see if we take some Versamark over the top of that, what's gonna happen? Well, it lifts it. But let's see if I go ahead and give it a back massage, what will happen? Maybe I should have put the Versamark down first. I don't know, we're gonna try. Back massage, back massage, back massage. And once I'm feeling confident, lift. Okay, so now I can clearly see where my image is without any problem. Yes, my Versamark pad has red on it. I'm not so worried about that. If it really worries you, you could like get a little bit of it off. Honestly, it doesn't matter to me whether it's on there or not because I'm going to be using this to emboss. So we're gonna grab a piece of paper. And make a little funnel out of it. And I'm gonna do both of them and see what happens. So I've got this one that has a very light image and this one that has a much darker image because I used ink first and then put my Versamark on. And let's take and do um, a gold. This is embossing powder. It starts as a powder and it's going to end up as a solid. And I'm a dumper because most of it's gonna work its way right back into my bottle. Okay, you can see that my Versamark held the powder. And right now that's powder. So let's take and let's do the red one and see what happens. Now I'll come back and do the whole thing but you can see the Versamark is also holding here. So if you have trouble seeing, you may want to ink and Versamark so that when you are putting your embossing powder down, you know that you got the whole thing. See, a little bit off there, not so much. Maybe I went too hard, maybe I tapped too hard. I bet it embosses, but give it a whirl and see what happens because I know it can be difficult when you can't see what it is you're doing. Now, like I said, I'm a dumper, so I'm gonna put all of this back 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 right into my right into my jar embossing powder you may have had for years and years 
and you don't use it very often, but you should. It's wonderful product. And now I'm going to take my heat tool. This is not a blow dryer. No, it's not a blow dryer. It's a heat tool. This is going to heat hotter than a blow dryer. You can't use a blow dryer to do this and you can't use this to do your hair. You'll singe it, I promise. Now, I'm gonna put it down, you're gonna hear it. I'm using the Heat It tool by Ranger and slowly but surely, it's going to get my paper and my embossing powder hot enough so that it melts. It becomes from a powder into a solid. And as it melts, I can see it happening. And that tells me to move my, um, my heat it tool. I'm not doing this. If you do this, it takes longer. Why? Well, you're adding heat and then you're taking it away so it instantly starts to cool. Then you're back and then it's cooling and then you're back and it's cooling. So if you stay in one place, and kind of follow it along as it's heating everything up and turning. So can you see? That has from a powder to a solid. Now I can see that there's a little space right there that did not turn. Can you see that little dark space right there? That tells me that I need to go back and, and get that hot again because it hasn't melted into that solid. And how long does it take to dry? Done. And it gives you that beautiful raised finish of a, a embossing on like a lovely stationery or invitation. Now, if you have a cylinder tool, so a cylinder tool to do your heating, you need to, you can't be this close. I'm sitting here literally right on top of it. I can do that with a Ranger heat it tool and it's not gonna burn my hands and it's not gonna burn my embossing powder. However, if you have a cylinder tool, you need to be a little higher back because one, it's going to work much faster, but two, it also burns much faster. So if you've ever scorched embossing powder, it may be that you worked it too long or you were using a cylinder tool. And for those of you who have been doing embossing since, oh, I don't know, embossing powders were invented, well, you may be highly proficient with a cylinder tool. For a newbie, I would absolutely start with the heated tool because it's, it's foolproof. You really can't go wrong. Will it take you an extra minute to get the job done? Yes, but you're crafting. It's okay. You've got a minute. It's all good. And it's always easier to take that extra minute now than to burn it and have to restamp and re emboss. You can see just a little spot right there. And there it goes. And a little spot right there. And there it goes. So now I'm totally embossed. And it's dry. Beautiful gold embossing. Now if I quickly, let's just ink this one up really good. down and go A, B, C, one, two, three, and up. Still got a little red on it. Doesn't bother me a bit. And bring over some embossing powder. And let's throw some silver down. And walk it on down. Walk, 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 walk. Now, you can have an anti-static little, um, little tool that will keep the embossing powder from clinging onto your, oh, I'm pressing too hard, onto your card base. And I have one. I made my little anti-static out of a, um, a pair of pantyhose, an old pair of pantyhose. I took the toes and I filled it with cornstarch or baby powder and 
if you rub it over your paper beforehand, the little dots won't stick. They do have one that you can buy. It's like $5.99. I made mine for, oh, an old pair of pantyhose and some baby powder that I already own. So I would rather have more embossing powder than the tool that I can make myself. Okay, I'm gonna put this back. Now, why did I do another one? Because I wanted to show those who have never seen embossing what happens if you don't heat your embossing powder. So see, pretty, right? Lovely. Powder that has not yet been heated. You ready? It just wipes right away. So when you're using embossing powder, you have to heat to set it. You have to turn it from that powder into that solid to do what it's supposed to do. Now, I've got that ready to go. I'm gonna put that one aside. And I'm gonna start just super easy. And I'm gonna bring over the Yasutomo um, metallic watercolors. They're beautiful and they're very inexpensive. I mean, they are really, really inexpensive. All of them are metallic. A little bit of water and you can start filling this in and painting. Because she's an angel, I wanted to have her be a little metallic-y. And being that the Yasutomo are so reasonably priced, and I do mean that, I really do, and the quality, these are out of Japan, they're beautiful. I don't know why they're so inexpensive, but um, I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my pan. Not too much water, because you kinda wanna make it a little bit of a paste. And when, they're, when you're all done, that water that I put in there, it's just gonna absorb in, it's just gonna dry up, you don't have to try and get that water out again. And I'm making it into just a little bit of a paste. Because then I can go in and I can paint. And where I've done my embossing, it's going to resist the paint, which means the paint's gonna kinda go off of it. It's not gonna stick because that embossing is now kind of like a, a, a metally plastic and it's non-porous. So this is a water-based product that won't stick to something that is non-porous. So these metallics won't work on something like plastic or glass or metal. They're really made for paper because it's a water-based product. And I can go in there and I can add my shimmer and my sparkle this, these are wonderful for kids, truly wonderful for kids. They have all the colors they could possibly use and they're affordable and they really do last quite a while. So I think I've got her kind of painted. So you can see, oh, <laughs> I just caught wind, I got, I can see it. I can't always see what I'm doing. This time I can see. <laughs> so where the embossing is, it's still there and it's still raised. The paint didn't stick to it because it's a water-based paint. If I had put alcohol ink over this, well, the alcohol ink would have covered that gold up because, well, that's meant for opaque and that that embossing is actually opaque now that it's in non-porous, now that it's been heat set. But look at that pretty shimmer. Oh my goodness gracious. So I could go in there and again, not too much water. You want enough to start getting it going, but then you kind of want it a little, a little more like a, a, a paste. You want to be able to move it, but you don't want it so wet that it, it waterlogs your paper. And honestly, I'm using 80 pound paper right now. I just grabbed my 80 pound paper. And I'm just gonna go in here and add my color. I'm using um, inexpensive paint brushes. What paint brushes do you already own? Try those. These I think are $7 and you get three or four of them. I can see where I didn't hit. And now I've got both wings and it's going to dry that shiny. 
it's going to dry with that shimmer and that sparkle and that sheen, which is absolutely beautiful. And then it's up to you with how you want to paint the rest of her. But it goes fairly quickly. It really, really, really does. I, I don't know what I want to do. I have too many options. Um, maybe we'll do the green. So a little bit of water into my green and kind of move it around and make it into a paste. You don't want it too wet, remember. A little bit of water. So if you're working with kids, you can absolutely take a mini mister and spray into these or you can get them started. And then you can almost basically take the, take the water away because you'll be able to clean the paintbrush with a baby wipe if you don't want them to have water next to them. Okay, so let's see. Um, probably could have used a smaller paintbrush, but that's okay. You use what you got in your hand. So let me get in there. And just paint. And where that embossing is, it's going to resist the green and that gold is not going to turn green. And as it dries, my shimmer will come up, but you can see the gold embossing is still there. And these are dry. Dry, dry, dry. And that's the shimmer that you're going to get. So I could come through and I could just paint, paint, paint until my little heart's content. I could even just go all over the whole thing and have the whole thing in shimmer in the, in the clear, because then I have an option of die cutting. So am I dry? Not quite. Then remember, I said you can clean with a paint uh, with a baby wipe. If you don't want the kids to have um, water because you're worried about spilling, just have them clean with a baby wipe. And if you've misted into these ahead of time, then they can go in and and make whatever do whatever color that makes their heart happy. It's still wet. A little bit of a pit. Oh, and I did it again. I should really go down to a smaller brush and just go in and paint. It dries real quick, very easy, and doesn't require um, to be an expert crafter. The hardest thing to do is to figure out what colors you want to use. And just go in there and paint. Now you could use watercolor pencils to do this. You could use Tombow markers to do this. You, you absolutely have options. But the shimmer and the shine is so pretty. Really, just so pretty. And can you see that shimmer coming up? So, then we have die cuts. And now this is, it's still wet. I can just leave it open to dry out or close it up. It's got space, so those are going to dry up just fine. Put it away till the next time you're going to use it. But it really does last quite a long time, especially for the, the money. It's crazy how inexpensive they are. So now I have my dies, and I'm just going to trim this down just a little bit. Ooh. And I'm going to die cut. I think that's good enough. Good trim. 
Okay, I'm all dry. Everything's dry. I'm going to bring over my die cutting machine, which I'm using a Big Shot today, a Sizzix Big Shot. For those of you who have never played with a Sizzix Big Shot machine, I will tell you that um, it is the workhorse of the industry without question. It just goes and goes and goes. I have three YouTubes on this. If you search YouTube under do's and don'ts of the Big Shot, I have one from, I don't know, several years ago that has almost I want to say about 700,000 views and then um, one a couple years ago and then one this year because the machine evolves and they keep bringing out new new tools for it. So if you're interested in looking for a, a die cutting machine, you may want to watch one or all of the do's of don'ts of the Sizzix Big Shot machine because it will really give you a comprehensive understanding of how to use the machine and it's easy peasy. I can't show you it's a crank you just roll it if you, that's it this is pretty foolproof so I am going to take the magnetic platform I'm going to use a magnetic platform today it is not included with the machine you will get a standard multi-purpose platform with the machine and you will be able to do everything I'm doing with that standard multi-purpose platform there's a reason I'm using a magnetic plate today and that's because I have a stamped image that I want to die cut out so I can take one of my dies and because I'm on a magnetic plate, it will stay where I position it. I don't have to use um, any kind of tape to hold my die in place. It stays because I'm on a magnetic. This is definitely a, a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a luxury to have the, the magnetic cu cutting plate because it's not an expensive. I want to say it's about $39.99, but it's a luxury that if you can have it, you're going to want it, especially if you do a lot of die cutting with stamps and dies where you need to be precise about where you're putting your die. Now I'm going to give this a roll and I've got my magnetic platform, I've got my cut plate, I've got my paper, my die, and then my do not cut plate. And we always use a do not cut plate and that's a plate that you try not to ever cut into because it stays nice and flat and never warps and it gives you an easy glide, an easy way to get your, your sandwich all the way through your machine. Now, no creaks, no cracks, that's because it's just an edge die. You don't even have to go back and forth, you don't have to rotate. This is an easy die to cut. Put that over here. Move that up here, out of my way. And now I have her on an edge. Now she's on an edge. So if I had an A2 card, I could stamp directly on my card and then cut the edge of my card. So that becomes part of the card. And if I wanted to get her entirely out, I would take my other die and line it right up here and cut it out. And remember, I said on some of these, you'll have to do a little bit of fussy cutting to get the whole thing out. This was my first attempt. I did better the next time. So you'll have to trim just a little bit at the bottom and just a little bit at the top. And you'll just cut that straight up. And then you've cut her entirely out. Do you want her on an edge? Do you want that edge? Would you have preferred that I cut this edge? It's all up to you. Or do you want your die, your, your stamped image completely out? With this, you truly have options. It's the first time where I've ever seen anybody do where you can cut one edge, two edges, or the entire piece out, or just stamp it. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited about it because it gives you so many options. And when you're doing, and you want that embellishment on that side, but you don't want a fussy cut, well, here's your opportunity to do so. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so this was using the Yasutomo paints, and I highly recommend them. They are one of the prettiest metallic paints, and for the price, again, God bless Yasutomo. 
Yasu, yeah, Yasutomo, I always say it wrong. Yasutomo, yes, I always wanna say Yasumoto, but it's not, it's Yasutomo. I don't know how they do such lovely product for the price that they do, but bless their pea picking hearts because this keeps crafting affordable. And we like su uh, to support companies that keep crafting affordable and make a super quality product. All right, so I'm gonna put her to the side. I've got samples to show you, so don't worry, but I wanna move on because I wanna get over to the graphics paper. I'm gonna move this out of my way and I'm gonna take her off. I guess I'll put her right back on and move her there. All right, I wanna get to the graphics paper. And I used the graphics paper, which is actually a plastic, in a YouTube with Marabou alcohol inks and their special sauce, which is amazing. I've also got for you alcohol ink Yupo paper. So I used the graphic plastic and it was beautiful with the alcohol inks. It was amazing with the alcohol inks and it was substantially less than the Yupo. Now when I say substantially less, here with the Yupo you get, uh, I think it's 10 sheets, 10 sheets. They're a five by seven and they're $9.99. With the graphics, we were able to get a custom pack for you and it's 10 sheets. I don't even know if the, because this is, because we're so screwed, it is, uh, is it nine? It's nine by 12, nine by 12 for the same price. So here's your Yupo. Here's the size of the Yupo. And here's the size of the graphics sheet. Same price, same number of sheets. Can you see the difference in the size? So you're getting about, well, I could, well, I could then move this one this way. So you're getting about two and a half sheets more with the with the graphics. The Yupo is a little more transparent. The graphics is not. The Yupo is a little thinner. The graphics is a little thicker. So what also makes the difference between the Yupo and the graphics is when you add heat. I can feel I've got embossing powder everywhere when you add heat, and I'm gonna add heat to this. So let's just cut us a little piece. Yupo, remember, kind of translucent. Let's bring over my heat tool. That is now stuck on my die cutting machine heat tool and I'm just going to add heat to the Yupo as if I was doing an embossing and the Yupo will start to um, curl and bend and warp. Yupo does not like heat. It is not friendly to heat. So it's starting to warp. And crinkle. Yupo does not like heat. It doesn't work well with heat. It's not meant to go well with heat. And the longer you do it, the more it will cream. And it smells. <laughs> the more heat you add to it, the more it will crinkle and curl and bend. And if you have a, um, 
a cylinder tool, it's going to be far worse than this. Your boat does not like heat. It just doesn't. It's not meant for heat. However, craft plastic, I'll take a small piece too. That way, fair is fair. Take a piece about the same size. And craft plastic, you're going to be able to put the heat on literally forever. Keep it in one place like I did with the Yupo. It gets hot. <laughs> and it's not going to bend, and it's not going to warp, and it's not going to buckle, and it's not going to ripple. Craft plastic is different in that regard. They both are beautiful with alcohol inks, but craft plastic is meant to take heat. Okay, look at that. It is meant to take heat. No rippling, no buckling, no warping, no, no warping. Can't do that with the Yupo. The Yupo is going to warp and it's going to bend because it doesn't like heat heat. So what does that matter to you? Well, I'm going to tell you, the craft plastic embosses like a dream. It just does. So I'm going to pull my Christmas tree. And I'm going to put it on a block. I think this block's going to be too, too small, just by a hair of a chinny chin chin. So you know what, we'll live with it, right? We can live with it. So I'm gonna Versa mark this up. For some mark, for some mark, for some mark. There are our fire engines. I think I can cut this in half actually. And I'm going to put it over the top. And I'm going to give a back massage. Now the craft plastic from Graphics is smooth. The Yupo is smooth. They are meant for non-porous type products. So any kind of alcohol ink is going to work well with them. We're not gonna use alcohol ink today. But Yupo is not good to do embossing. Okay, there's my image. Now the nice thing about the craft plastic is that it's static free. You don't have to take one of those little tools and rub all over the place to um, keep the little dots off. And you don't have to make one with a used uh, or old pantyhose and some talcum powder and make a little ball to rub over it before you do your um, stamping with your Versamark to keep that static down. This is going to be beautiful. It embosses like a dream. Oh, there's mine. So let's do, um, let's do gold or let's do black. And I'm using a detailed embossing powder. We always like detailed embossing powder best. Why? Because you need a detailed embossing powder to get all of those nooks and crannies of the, de uh, the design of the stamp without over too much embossing powder. Detailed 
defines how big the grains are in the embossing powder. How fine is it? And the chunkier the embossing powder, the more it's going to melt and spread. And we want this to be really beautiful and catch all of that detail in the stamp. So if you're using a regular standard embossing powder, or even a chunky embossing powder on something so detailed. That may be a reason why you're not getting a really good result. Let me put all of this back. And away. Okay. So now when I go to emboss this, it's going to go from that matte black, and I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I've got some already over here ready to go, but I wanna give those who have never seen it before an idea of what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna keep my heat tool in the same position until I start seeing it melt. And you will know because you'll see this high gloss it goes from a powder to a solid, and you can, you can physically see it as it happens. And then you know it's time to move your heat tool. Let's get some of the tree. That's good. I think you can see where I did and where I didn't. So you can see where it's been embossed is shiny and where it hasn't been embossed, it's still dark and, and just blah and, and has no shine to it at all. That all still needs to be heat set so that it turns into that melted plastic that sits on top and gives you that beautiful raised look as opposed to being a powder, which would wipe right off. So you can see where it hadn't, I hadn't put the heat tool to it enough and it wipes right off. This is on the graphics and you can see it's perfectly fine. It's, it's in perfect condition. No warpage, no, um, no crinkling, no curling of the edges, nothing. The graphics plastic is different than you boat in that regard. Now, what are we going to do? Well, thankfully, the SMS girls, <laughs> they already made some for me. <laughs> Look at by the magic of TV. I have pre-embossed items, <laughs> pre-embossed, ready to go. Look at that's in copper. Is that not gorgeous? Detailed copper, detailed. Look at Santa. How cute is he? These are all ready to be colored, but not colored with alcohol ink, which is what this and Yupo is meant to do. There's my wreath. And these all have the dyes to, to pull them out. So cute. Look at Santa on the chimney coming down with the reindeer. Put them in copper. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this one because this one was done in white embossing powder or clear embossing powder. And it's going to act as a resist to what I'm gonna do. Now, I'm gonna play with mementos and mementos were not made to do what I'm going to do. This paper was not made for memento. Memento was not made for this, but we are going to make it work because you probably already own some memento markers. Are all markers made the same? No, you would have to try your markers to see if you're going to get the same results. I am sure that memento are going to work beautifully. I am sure that Tombows do not. <laughs> Trust me on this. Now, I've got my Christmas tree in there. Can you see my Christmas tree? Yeah, there it is. Can you see my Christmas tree? And I'm all about the scribble, scribble, scribble. I truly am. So where my Christmas tree is, 
I'm going to just kind of scribble a little bit on top. I'm all about the scribble, scribble, scribble. Then I'm going to take one of my finger daubers and I'm going to move that all around, all over my Christmas tree. And where the white is, or the clear, it's going to resist. So that the definition of the tree is still coming through. Now I can take my darker color and scribble, scribble, scribble. And blend that in. So now my Christmas tree's got a couple different colors going on. If I wanted a little more olivey, I can come back in and add a little bit more olive. And it doesn't matter whether I'm using. the white as a resist, or I grab, oh, I bet this one's the white one. I bet this is the clear. You think that's the clear and this is the white? Let's try it on this one and see if the result's the same. So scribble, 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 scribble. Blend, 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 blend. Oh yeah, pretty close. I think one of these is clear and one of these is white. And then I probably have a gold one in here somewhere. Let's see if they put a gold one or a silver one or a copper one. Oh, gold. So now I've got my gold Christmas tree. And I can do the same thing. Scribble, 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 scribble and maybe a little bit of my darker color. Scribble, 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 scribble. And blend, 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 blend. Now I'm not gonna care if I go off my side of my tree because I'm gonna cut, die cut that away. doesn't matter to me at all that I'm off this side because I'm going to die cut that away. If I want more green, I scribble, scribble, scribble. Really, scribble, scribble, scribble. And then you go in and blend your color. Easy to do. Now I have here to do. And maybe I want to do that in yellow. So I can take my yellow and scribble, scribble, scribble. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Take my finger dauber and oh, which has got green on it. Let's use a finger dauber that does not have green to it. Blend, blend, blend. And I don't care if I accidentally go into my green a little bit. Doesn't bother me at all. If I want it darker, grab a different yellow. Maybe I like this yellow better. Right over the top of it. And it's going to change that whole color. So now I've got a yellow window behind, but I've got a bow to do. All right, let's grab my red and a little bit of color.
And I don't know if you can see, I have a little yellow in my bow. No big deal. Come in. And blend your color. If I need a little bit more red in places, I'm going to add a little bit more red. And blend your color. But oh no, I got it into my yellow. Not a problem. <laughs> Bring back your yellow dauber. Ooh, bring back your yellow dauber. Put a little yellow down here. And where that red has come into, let's make it a little more prominent. Let's get some red in there. Oh no. What did I do? I got red and I've ruined it. Oh my gosh, heaven forbid. No, you didn't. Put a little more yellow in there and go in and erase. You're like, huh? Seriously, erase. Add a little more yellow. Go in and just erase. And all of a sudden, all is right with the world again. And if we wanted a little brown on our side, okay. A little bit of brown. Grab a brown dauber. And in we go. and we're starting to color the entire image. And yet it's not covering up any of that embossing, but it's a quick and simple. So far I've only used, I've used two greens, I've used a brown, and I've used a red. But you're like, Stacy, I don't know, now I've got all that brown on the bottom and I'm not crazy about it. Oh, okay, um, let's use some blue. Maybe it's a blue sky, I, I don't know. But let's use some blue and we'll put some blue down here and maybe over on the side. And let's grab a blue dauber. And away we go. Let's add a little blue up here. So that that brown is gone off the side and the red is gone. And now I'm making the background because I'm going to die cut this all away. So that I don't, I'm not so concerned about that. What you can't do with this. is touch it. So I can't touch it because the plastic is not is made for non-porous things. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to color right here. See me coloring right there? Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit more. Nope, wrong way. So I'm going to color here a little bit more. Can you see where my fingers are? Got a finger. See where my fingers are? Do you see what I just did? I lifted the color straight off because it's still wet because this is non-porous. And you're like, oh my gosh, I just ruined it. Of course you didn't. No, no, no. Easy peasy. Add a little more color. 
add a little more color and go back in and make it disappear. You have got so much open time to work your colors to be exactly what you want them to be. You've got plenty of time. And in fact, if you don't like any of this, you can wipe it all off. If you look at it and you say, that's just not for me, it's like the mineral paper. Look at that instant eraser. You can wipe it all off. What you can't do is touch it, not until you heat set or you leave it overnight to dry. It takes a couple hours for this to dry. It will dry on there so that you no longer can get fingerprints anywhere. And a little blue up here to finish it off. And then before I die cut, before I die cut, I'm gonna take my heat tool. And just like I was embossing, I'm going to set that because I don't wanna be able to do that fingerprint. I don't want the fingerprint. Although actually on some of mine I like it because I do this and then I heat set and it gives it kind of almost a water water um, watercolor look. So I don't really mind that, but you might. So I wanna tell you heat set. And because the craft plastic is able to withstand the heat, and don't ask me why, it also does not burn the embossing powder. I could sit here for an hour and it's not going to burn my embossing powder. But I need to let it heat so that it melts into and my dye based ink that is not meant for non-porous paper and we're using it on a non-porous surface has a chance to dry. And then when it's all done, Again, no warpage. Okay, that's too close for me. Sorry guys, too close. No warpage. Still a little close. Everything's still bendable, malleable, and beautiful. Then we bring over our die and we cut. So these were on the white. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I did this one earlier on the white. I did that one on the white. Doesn't that look gorgeous? So that, these two started out the same and that's how I finished it. Ooh, right? So let me bring over my die cutting machine, put my daughter's back. And like I said, not all ink will work. If I was doing a big surface, I would, let's say I wanted, before I do that one, let's say I wanted to do this whole thing background in the blue. Instead of using a marker, I would just say, I would use my, my ink, my dew drop, and then take my dauber. Cause a marker, you know, you're gonna be coloring a lot. This'll do much faster. And blend, blend, blend. If I wanted to do a large space, use the ink pad as opposed to the marker. The ink's exactly the same and the colors are the same. but I'm able to do a much larger size 
much faster. But if I don't heat set, what's gonna happen? You put your finger in it, oh no, that's okay, come back. However, Doris had a darling idea. What if you took this and you did a whole little paper and then you put a little child's handprint or footprint and then heat set? Or what if they made the card and down in the bottom, you had them put their little fingerprint? Oh my gosh, what if you had them just color on it, stamp anything, whatever, emboss anything, but then have them do it and at the very end have them put their little thumbprint right there. How cute would that be? Because you can do that with this. Until you have set the color, just like the mineral paper. Now mineral paper is not fond of heat either. But you can just wipe it right off. So I'm going to set my, or I already set my color on this one. At least I did a good job, a pretty good job of setting it. I'm going to die cut it out. What did I do with the, oh, here's this. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you telling me. Bring it on over. Lay it on down. I've got my magnetic platform. I've got my cut plate. I've got my paper. I've got my die, which I'm going to line up. Oh, it wants to, let's see if I can move it a little bit. It's pulling towards the magnet. Let's see if I can do a little better job. All right, you know what? We're gonna go for it and let's roll. And then let's cut. So I'm just going to snip my bottom right there, snip my top. Oh, I don't even really have to snip it right there. And it's good to go. But if I wanted to cut the whole thing out, I could. I could take my other die and line it right up and cut out. So it does take time for them to dry because you're on a non-porous. But my goodness gracious, when they're done, they are so pretty and soft and sweet and elegant. And you can go in there and you can just keep adding layer upon layer upon layer of color until you're happy. If I wanted to, I could take this now I've already heat set this, so I'll have to do it again, but I could go in there and draw in where my little bulbs are. I could just fill that in with the, with the marker where the ornaments are. Right on top of the green. and fill in. It's up to you what you want to do with them, but that embossing looks smoking hot. Can't do it on Yupo. And then heat set until you're finished. Or just let them sit out overnight. Either way, but you do have to add that heat without question or let it dry. One or the other. Otherwise, you'll get your finger. See, I, see, I put my fingerprints all over this one. I kind of smudged them in to give it more of a water uh, watercolor effect. So pretty. You have options. And again, I could cut this entire piece out and extract it out and, and use that. Or I could have just cut. Do I have another one? Do I have one more? Oh, I do. Do I? Maybe? No? Hmm. No, maybe I used all of that one. I was going to say I'll cut the other one on the other side so you can see the other Oh, I do. Oh, I do. Okay, so now if I took it and I cut here, it would cut this piece off, giving me a totally different look. Bring my die cut back over. 
and line it on up. And again, on a card base, it's even more dramatic. And send it on through. And now I've cut off that edge. So if this is your card, or if you're making a tag, or if you want this side hanging off, now you've got the detail on that side. Look at that copper embossing powder. It looks great. And again, on the, on the graphics plastic, which doesn't tear, it, it just holds up. It's amazing. It's kind of like paper leather from Sizzix. Um, only that won't work with alcohol ink. So paper leather won't work with alcohol inks. We're going to do some paper leather next week. And graphics doesn't work so well with dye based ink. So it's like the two of them both have wonderful elements, but neither of them tear or crack or rip or tear. Amazing. Okay, so what did we do? Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, so we first just started playing with embossing powder and what is embossing powder and how to use an embossing powder and how pretty is that shimmer paint sold in a palette Yasutomo I think it's I, I think it's like somewhere between 10 and 12 dollars for the whole set 10 and 14 dollars it's really inexpensive so we used that first after we used detail embossing powder it's important it say detail on the name you can always do super fat lines with detailed embossing powder, but you cannot, you cannot use um, uh, fat embossing powder or standard embossing powder to do super fine lines. So if you have detail, detail will go for everything, but a chunky or a regular embossing powder will never be able to cling into some of those super fine lines. So that's why we like detail the best and it's stampendous and there's Gold, silver, copper, white, clear, and black. That's the only colors they make in it. So we played with the Yasutomo in our just regular paper, regular paper. And then we played with our craft plastic, which is different than a Yupo. Remember, Yupo's a little more transparent. It's got a translucent, it's a little thinner, and it does not like heat. Don't try to heat your Yupo. I don't think you'll be very happy with it. Also, the craft plastic is, you get a lot more for the money. The bang for the buck is definitely there. Um, and you can add, now could you imagine using alcohol ink over this and special sauce? Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine right now. Pretty. So, difference between the two. They both work with alcohol inks beautifully. Thinner, translucent, thicker, opaque, and um and is heat resistant and we just made lovely things we just played took our memento ink not all the inks are the same you're going to have to play with your ink to see if your ink will do it we'll put memento markers online on sale as part of the youtube yummies we'll have the craft plastic as a youtube yummies we'll have the dyes those are priced the way they are, and I'm going to show you those really quick. So let's go through those super fast. So we've got the Angel, which I use today. And then we've got Santa Claus is coming to town, going down the roof, die-in stamp set, and these are full-size stamps to do a full card. The Christmas tree that I played with today. Probably, I don't know if it's my favorite, it's pretty close to my favorite, but um, Christmas in the City. Love this one. But I love the wreath too. I'm a wreath girl. I love wreaths. And then Santa himself. He's upside down. There we go. <laughs> All right, storyboards. So here is the hot foil plate that I didn't even show you today. But there's your, if you've got a, 
uh, go press and foil, a glimmer machine, or um, a Gemini machine, you're going to use your hot foil plate. It cuts and foils at the exact same time, or it cuts and inks at the exact same time. You don't have to have a foil machine to use it. Let me bring over the rest of the storyboards. Here's the angel. So you can see just stamped, stamped and cut on one side, stamped and cut on the other, and then all the way out. So our angel, and I think I am going to back up just a little bit for this. So the storyboards, I can show you the storyboards. Then we have Santa. And we have Santa as the stamp. Santa with one side cut out. So can you imagine that being your card and opening it up? Santa with your other side cut out. And then Santa all the way cut out. You have options. And then we have our wreath. So the wreath stamped, one side cut out, second side cut out, the entire wreath cut out. Then we have our Christmas in the city, the stamped image, one side, the other side, the entire. Then we have the Christmas tree I was working with, one side, the other side, and the entire tree. And Santa Claus is coming to town. It was the night before Christmas. The full stamp, one side, the other side, and the entire image. And then, bless Elena. Here you go, on an A2 card. On an A2 card. This one she made into a gatefold. So it's using the other side. Here's your standard card. Here you have Santa as your standard card. Here you have him as a gatefold. She did the same with the tree and then a gatefold. And it was the night and a gatefold. So now you see why you want the other side to make a stunning gatefold or trifold. It's trifold. And then last but not least, before we get to the samples. So you have the wreath, which is orientated as a uh, horizontal, not a vertical. So that's a horizontal, not a vertical, unlike Christmas in the City. So there is an I Want It All bundle. It does not include the foil plate. But all six dies and stamps are in the I Want It All bundle. And it's a little bit more than $59.99 this time because the stamps are so big and the dies are A2 size. So let's start with samples. Let's start with Claire. And this is Claire's, all of her designs from the design team. So you can see how perfectly they cut. And here's the wreath. Now the wreath can be almost anything. You could make that a fall wreath. You, I mean, you really have an opportunity to, to make the wreath what it is you want it to be. And then she did some watercolor on Santa. And this one is fabulous. She took little snippets of different, um, different stamp sets. And here you've got, um, you've got from Twas the Night, and here you've got the Angel, and here you've got In the City. 
and she took little snippets to make that card. And then here's her angel card. Okay, and she used mega flakes to go with those by Creative Expressions. It's their cosmic shimmer, I think is the, the but they're flakes. Really cute. And she cut it, but she didn't cut the card base. She just put a piece of paper down and cut here as a layering option. And then her Santa, her Santa is stellar. So this is Claire. Then we have Belinda. Belinda, she really liked Santa. Look at her Santa. And she cut the entire image out. And then she used some must-haves to frame them in. This is Belinda. And Belinda. Isn't it cute? And look at her angel. Oh my gosh, Belinda. Love, love, love. And her wreath. Love, love, love. Look at how vibrant those colors are. She inked it and then she used a little bit of a glaze or glossy accents to get the shine. And then Oh my gosh. And then she made this ornament out of a uh, paper. Uh, I, 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 it's amazing. And she stamped into it and then, and then she just, and then she painted it. This is just amazing. Belinda, absolutely amazing. Love it. Then we have Sharon. Now, Sharon was very smart. <laughs> Sharon cut the paper with the second edge so she could fit this piece of paper right in on top of this. And then she still has this edge without anything behind it. So she, she took the blue paper, she cut the edge right to it so she could layer that blue paper right on top, and then she cut the edge here. Sharon was very smart. That was really brilliant. And then we have her Christmas tree. And then we again, a beautiful Santa. Beautiful Santa. And then we have Doris. And here's Doris's Christmas tree. It kind of tucks, tucks underneath like that. And then you lift this up and open it up. And you can see how it cut right into the card. And then you move that up and it closes your card. This is Doris. And then Doris did this one all in, all in the shimmer paint that I showed you, the Yasutomo shimmer paint. Whole angel was done with it. This is Doris. And then we can take this down and open it up. Doris did a lovely job. That's Doris. And we've got a tag using our cut and foil. How fun is that? Go press and foil machine, glimmer machine, Gemini machine, or you just ink it and run it through your Big Shot machine and it's gonna cut and it's going to ink all of that. It's like a letter press. It's gonna ink all of that design for you. And then her Santa. And again, you just kind of lift it and open and open.
Doris is Santa. How cute is that? And then the one I love, 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 and I showed this one on Facebook, a sneak peek of this one. I love Christmas in the city. I just love the little people walking around and it just makes my heart happy. So this is Doris. And then last but not least, we go to Elena. And Elena has got her foil ornament, her bubble. And another bobble. So pretty done with the foil. And her Christmas in the city. Elena's so creative. She does all the storyboards. So if you ever call in and you get to tell, talk to her, tell her what a great job she does on those storyboards. That is a tremendous amount of work. She's cutting for, a, for weeks, <laughs> cutting and stamping, getting the storyboards ready. And her Santa, which if you slide it off, then you flip up and you flip open, oops, and you flip open and then you turn around and she's incorporated just about every die. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So that's Elena and then we've got her wreath. And she did a few altered art pieces. So she took all her wood mount stamps off their blocks and she saved the blocks and now she's using them you could use this as a paperweight you could burnish it and use it as a coaster but how cute are those off of old wood blocks for your stamps she took all her stamps off the blocks and kept the blocks to do something with and then in her Oh my goodness gracious, if you can even believe this. Okay, this started out as a pineapple. <laughs> the tin, the tin was an actual pineapple that um, a customer brought us some things back from Hawaii. They were there on vacation and she stopped to the store on her way home to, I can't remember what state, but it's not California. And this had cookies in it and it was a little pineapple. Well, Elena looked at that and she turned it around and she made the angel fit. And of course it wouldn't be Elena if we didn't light it up. Out of a pineapple. Oh my gosh. Okay. So there you have it. Holy smokes artichokes. Some absolutely beautiful, beautiful cards by the girls. They did an amazing job. You can't help but love, I mean, their Santas just are just as darling as can be. You can't help but love each and every one of them. I'm gonna tilt on up and I'm gonna say, oh, hello there. No looking for wrinkles right now. We're gonna tilt on back. And I'm gonna say, okay, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking made simple. Oh, that was a lot, but I hope you learned something and I hope it answered some of your questions about the graphics white pla craft plastic and the Yupo and the difference between them and what you can and cannot do with them and how much more you get with the graphics. I love Yupo. I love, I mean, I, it's great product, but my goodness gracious, if you're on a budget and you want two and a half times the amount for the same price, get the graphics. You're going to be thrilled with it. I promise. And then my collection, my collection is a one or done. So when it's gone, it's gone. And, um, and it'll, it'll be up and hopefully you like it as much as I did. <laughs> and we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. And, um, and we'll put the, the memento markers on and we'll put the, um, embossing powder on, a YouTube yummies and my daubers will be on. They'll be their normal price because you get 20 daubers for $9.99 and nobody, nobody comes close to that price. So 
Okay, it was long, but I hope you had a good time. It is me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. If you can come visit us in our retail store, come spend the day with me, and you can do the free in-store make and take on Saturdays with me. All right, you guys, I'll see you later. Bye.